Hello. Today we'll be talking about tolerances. So go ahead and put this in the table of contents. Put the title of your next page. Put today's date next to it. And then we'll begin. So we're talking about tolerances. We're talking about manufacturing. Uh, whenever they have to make parts, whether they machine the parts, pour them, drill them, whatever they do to make them, variation is unavoidable. So therefore, no two manufactured parts are ever identical. Some degree of variation will exist. You still need to be able to interchange parts. The tolerances are used in production drawings to control the manufacturing process to control the variation between copies of the same part. In particular, tolerances are applied to making parts in assembly. One advantage of using tolerances is that interchangeable parts can be used. <clears throat> for example, if you have, for instance, let's say a machine that doesn't operate because it needs bearings, well then if you don't have any extra bearings on the shelf, you can take bearings off another machine and use that one because hopefully the bearings are the same tolerances, the same specifications when they were manufactured, and they should interchange uh, between from machine to machine. Large tolerance may reflect, affect functionality of part, Specified tolerances to ensure proper function, and small tolerance will affect the cost of the part. The more you, um, the tighter you make the tolerances, then the harder the machinist or the manufacturer has to work to make it to meet tolerances, and therefore they will charge you more for it, so it raises the cost of the part. Uh, cost that increases with smaller tolerances or require, uh, requires precise manufacturing and will require quality control with inspection and rejection of parts. So any parts that they have to reject because they're not made of your tolerances, they will bill you for those parts when they throw them away. So do not specify a tolerance that is smaller than necessary. Um, ANSI ASME standard Y14.5. Uh, each dimension shall have a tolerance except those dimensions specifically identified as reference, maximum, minimum, or stock. The tolerance may be applied directly to the dimension or indicated by a general note located in the title of the drawing. And before I continue, I want to remind you, um, just take any notes you want to on this one, on this PowerPoint, and then uh, if you need to pause the video, obviously pause to take notes down. Tolerance is an acceptable amount of dimensional variation that will still allow an object to function correctly, whether that function is made to move, spin, or just stay locked in position. So your basic tolerances that occur most often are, are on working drawings are limit dimensions. Right there, you see the 0 .980, 0 .975. There, they're giving you the upper and lower tolerances, so therefore the limits. Then you have bilateral. They're telling you that 1.170 plus or minus 0 0.002. So it could be plus 0 0.002 larger or 0 0.002 smaller. And then you have unilateral tolerances. This one here is the 0.5 dimension. It says point plus 0 0.005 with the minus is 0 0.000. Therefore, when, that means that gap can be larger, but cannot be any smaller than the dimension given. Limit dimensions um, provide an upper limit and lower limit for the descent dimension. Any size between or equal to the upper limit and or lower limit is allowed. The upper limit here is 1.126 and lower limit is 0.125. So any dimension in between those two values is considered acceptable. Bilateral, here they're trying to give you tolerance that you can go plus or minus on. Um, the top one is 0 0.003 plus or minus and the bottom one is plus or minus 0 0.05. Provide an equal allowable to variation, larger and smaller. It uses a plus minus symbol to specify the allowable variation. Counterboard depth can be 0 0.003 larger or smaller than 0.25. That's the top dimension they're showing you. And the whole location, bottom dimension, can be 0 0.05 larger or smaller than 1.5. Uh, here, the unilateral top provides an allowable to variation in only one direction, either larger or smaller. So this uh, uh, Example here, they have circled. It is only allowed to be larger, not smaller. Use separate plus, uh, uh, plus and minus signs. The whole diameter may vary 0 0.004 larger, but may not be smaller than 0.5. So identify the type of tolerance displayed in red. So the top one up here, which one do you think that would be? All right, and that would be unilateral. This only has a plus. There is no minus on that one. How about this one here in the middle? That would be um, bilateral, because it has plus or minus 0 0.002. And then the dimension down here on the bottom, of course that one is limit, because they're giving you the upper and the lower limit for that dimension.
There you go. Specified dimension is the target dimension from which the limits are calculated. So specific dimension here is the 1.5. Limit to the maximum minimum size is shown by the tolerance dimension. Upper limit is the maximum allowed allowable dimension. So the upper limit here would be the 1.5 plus the 0 0.05, which would give us a 1.55. The lower limit is the minimum allowed dimension. And so therefore be 1.5 minus 0 0.05, which would give you 1.45. So technically the upper limit and the lower limit are 1.55 and 1.45. Tolerance of the total variance in dimension is equal to the difference between the upper and lower limits. So if you take this, uh, subtract the upper limit from the lower limit, you would get 0 0.10 for this tolerance here. So calculating tolerance, you have the plus sign, 0 0.05, so up to 1.55, and then you have the minus 0 0.05 down to 1.45. So tolerance would be the total allowable tolerance, which is point, um, should be 0.1. I'm not sure why they say point, um, zero 0.01 up here. I just now saw that, but down here, this one's correct. This one says 0.1, and that's the allowable uh, tolerance. General tolerances are tolerances that are assumed to be uh, assumed that no specific tolerance is given for a dimension. So therefore, if you don't see any dimensions called out and in, in, uh, on the actual dimension itself, um, on the page somewhere, you'll see boxes like these two down here, the angles and the linear dimensions. These will be called out somewhere on the page, and these are for all. Um, these are tolerances for all general dimensions if they're not called out specifically on the paper. Typically, tolerances are specified based on the number of digits to the right, the decimal point, and the dimension, and they are shown on the drawing. So, for example, here we see a unilateral tolerance up here in the top right, the 0 0.004. Um, then we see a bilateral plus or minus 0 0.05 for this 1.5 on that hole. And then we see a bilateral here also, the plus or minus 0 0.003 on that hole. And then we see a limit here with the 0.753 and the 0.748. Any other dimension, for example, this 1.00, if it's not called out for tolerance, then we would go, uh, we would default down to the sheet tolerances since it has two decimal places, 1.00. That's two decimal places right here. So that tolerance is going to be defaulted to a plus or minus 0 0.010. Um, that's going to be the same for most of these, but the dimensions I'm looking at all have. Uh, two decimal places, the four, the seven, the eight, um, and three. This one up here, this through hole though, it's 0.380 in diameter. Um, and so that's three decimal places and there's no tolerance called out here. So we default down to the sheet tolerances. So the decimal places, it goes to point, uh, plus or minus 0 0.005. That kind of gives you some ideas there. So that would be plus or minus 0 0.010. So, if we do that, the upper limit for the 3, if you add 0 0.010 to it, would be 3.010. The lower limit would, of course, if you subtract the 0 0.010, would be 2.990. So the total tolerance would be your upper minus your lower, and that would give you 0 0.020 is your tolerance right there. Out of tolerance, a manufactured part is said to be out of tolerance if the part is not within specified limits. Manufacturing facilities often institute quality control measures to help ensure the parts within tolerance. So they don't inspect every single part. Obviously, if your business makes washers for a living and they make 10,000 washers a day, you won't expect, inspect every single washer. You inspect a sample, which might be 100 or maybe even just 1,000. And then based on that sample, then you have to basically predict if the rest of the, sample, rest of the batch will pass inspection from that one sample or if it all should be scrapped and thrown away or even remelted and tried to be made into washers again. Uh, there's different types of fits. Uh, I do want to write these down. These are very, very important. You can go ahead and pause right here if you need to. Clearance fit limits the size of mating parts so that a clearance always results when mating parts are assembled. Interference fit limits the size of mating parts so that interference always results when mating parts are assembled. And the transition fit occurs when two mating parts can sometimes have a clearance fit and sometimes have an interference fit. So a clearance fit. Clearance fit always um, a clearance between the axle and the opening. So here we see an axle that is trying that was, needs to be inserted into this hole right here. You notice the um, axle has an upper and lower limit, and then the hole has an upper and lower limit also. No matter how big this axle is, the biggest it can be is 10.00, it will still be smaller than the smallest the hole can be, 10.15. So that means that when you insert this axle at the largest dimension possible, 
and with this whole small dimension possible, you will still have clearance of 0.15 in between the axle and the hole it's going into. So therefore, it's made to go in without any kind of friction. Interference fit, always interference between the axle and the opening. So now if we look at this one, if we look at the smallest the actual hole can be, uh, would be 9.85. The biggest the axle could be would be 10.00. Obviously, the axle would be larger than the hole. So you'd have to have some kind of force to push the axle into the hole, and therefore you would have interference. So that part is not made to move once it's been inserted into the hole. Uh, the maximum material condition, MMC, is the condition of a part when it contains a large amount of material. So go ahead and jot that down. You can pause the video if you need to. The MMC of an external feature, um, example, the length of a plate is the upper limit of the dimension. The MMC of an internal feature, so for example, a hole, is the lower limit of the dimension. So you have external, and then you have internal. So you can drop those two down also. The least material condition, or LMC, is the condition of a part when it contains a small amount of material. You can go pause, pause the video and drop this down also. The LMC of an external feature, the length of a plate, is the lower limit of the dimension. The LMC of the internal feature, diameter of a hole, is the upper limit of the diameter dimension. So allowance is the minimum clearance or maximum interference between parts. Oops, sorry, I'm going to go back. So allowance, if you want to drop this down, that equation in the middle of the slide is MMC internal feature minus the MMC external feature. So here, on this, once again, back to this interference fit, so the smallest hole can be, be 10.15. Um, I'm sorry, this is a clearance fit, because this would actually, the 10.15 would be um, still larger than the biggest the axle would be, would be 10.00. So the MMC internal minus MMC external, well, the MMC internal would be the 10.15, them right here. The MMC external, would be the largest here, so it would be the 10.00. Subtract those two, and you'd have 0.15. So that would be the allowance between those two parts. And there you go, like I just said. Um, here, this one is the MMC internal feature, and this is the interference fit now. Sorry about that. Minus MMC external feature. So there's the minimum MMC internal feature, the 9.85. And then the MMC external feature will be the 10.00. Now we still subtract those two. And so by doing that in order, the 9.85 minus the 10.00, you do get a negative point, or sorry, negative 0 0.15 as our allowance. This allowance for maximum interference is 0.15, and you're allowed to have a negative allowance, which means there is interference there. Uh, note about dimension tolerance. In general, the more significant figures in the dimension, the tighter the tolerance. Overly precise dimensions and overly tight tolerances increase manufacturing costs, and specify dimensions only to the precision and tolerance necessary for the part to function properly. That's it, gentlemen. Um, that's it for the PowerPoint. You can go ahead and cross page out. It's on the line, so I'm on the page. Witness sign and date. And I will see you when I return. Sorry about the audio quality of this video. I don't have my best headphones with me right now. But uh, I will hopefully see you in a couple of days and good luck and uh, goodbye.